Uh, if you take 14 square feet of samples, uh, because of the you know, scientific measurements, you got to keep everything identical. Because if you take five in one place and 15 in another, you know, the place you take five it may look like, hey, there's not much there. But where it's 15, it was a bunch. So, you know, they standardized it by taking uh, 14 square feet of area that sampling area throughout the state. Uh, the training for that, the Department of Natural Resources, of which DNR is uh, uh, APD, DNR, EPA are all involved in this program uh, to where they are running out of funds. As you well know, if you're not maybe you're experienced in economic crunch in this, in this also, and, it, uh, and so are many of the entities in the state and federal governments. Uh, I was talking with uh, Tim Lewis the other day, who is the, uh, he's the assistant director for the Environmental Protection and Division in, in this region, and he was talking about that, uh, you know, the lack of funding, you know, the cutbacks in, in funding for programs and so forth and so on, which is hampering efforts for that. But the adopt stream program is to make, one of the main goals is to make citizens aware of what's going on in the environment. Another one, and John alluded to it earlier, uh, another one of the goals is to foster relationships between citizen advocacy, advocacy groups and Local, local and state governments. Uh, so, you know, once you once you do this, once you establish, you go out and you do the biological sampling, and there is a key in a chart, you know, the mathematical formula that you fill out according to the number and kinds of these little critters that you find, and they uh, that gives you an idea. You get an index number, and that gives you an idea. Now, once that happens, oh, well, I'll allow me to progress for just a moment. Uh, the EPA and the EPD have made great strides over the past 30 years in, in point source pollution. And by point source, what I'm saying with that is that's somewhere where you can go up and say, that's where it's coming from. I can point to it. Something like an engine or uh, a particular municipality with their oxidation ponds or sewage treatment plant, and so forth and so on. You know, those are fairly easy to locate, and the EPA has done a pretty good job. Yes, there are inadequacies in the program and room for improvement, as within all organizations. But They've done a fairly good job of improving over the past 30 years. Now, that's point source pollution. What we're talking about with the adopt stream is non-point source pollution. In other words, something's in the water. You go out, you do the sampling, you find this, some of these critters missing, your index level is low, uh, then you begin to look at it a little more closely and say, okay, what is causing a lack of these critters in the water? Something about it has impaired the stream. Uh, usually it's dissolved oxygen, which is low. <coughs> uh, so then what happens is, once you do that, then you come back and do chemical monitoring, where you actually go out and you take water samples, um, and there are kits that are available. There's one here. I think you've got it, haven't you? Yeah, Jerry has it available you know, if you want to check that out. Uh, Angela, Angela Bray, that's uh, uh, Southern Regional Division. And, uh, and I'll help us out with that. But 
you know, you go in, you take samples of water, test it. This happens to be from pH. In other words, is there too much acid or too too much base? You know, it could be affecting the insect levels because insect levels form the base of the food chain, which means that if those get wiped out by some impairment, then everything above that. Well, the minnows have nothing to eat. Well, if the minnows have nothing to eat, they die. If they die, the brim don't have anything to eat. They die. So, you know, it's just it's a progressive situation. And uh, so that's why you do the biological aspect of it to ascertain the level of uh, impairments in the stream. And then once you do that, and you do find their low levels, that's when you come back in and you do your chemical monitoring. Now, there are more advanced, the four basic uh, impairments that are checked for in the adopt stream program is dissolved oxygen, uh, conductivity, pH, and temperature. Uh, those are the main factors that, that are checked. However, you can get advanced kits like this one, which obviously costs more, but uh, that's the alkalinity. You know, you can do things like nitrate testing, nitrate phos phosphate. Uh, you know, uh, you know there could be all oxygen. So there are, there are many things that you could go above and beyond. The training is free. It's a volunteer program state of Georgia, if you're interested in it, and we can get a group together, Terry Munns from uh, the Dock Spring Program, uh, we'll come down and help out. Uh, I've got to have my certification as a trainer updated, and then I was talking to Terry this week, so she's coming down soon to train the trainers. Uh, but, uh, uh, Angela Bray and Rich Batten, both from uh, from Valdosta and the Southern Regional Development Commission, are both trainers. So, you know, there is an opportunity available if you would like to do so. And the thing about it is, when you do so, if you choose to volunteer, you do the biological training or the biological monitoring four times a year. Uh, that gives you a snapshot of the, of the health of that stream during the basic four seasons because, as you know, temperature is going to fluctuate, water levels are going to fluctuate. So, you, you know, if you go out and check one day, uh, you know, it's 98 degrees in South Georgia, then the water temperature is going to be up. So, yeah, if you check the next day after a rain in the, uh, you know, 6 to 78, then, of course, the water temperature is going to be down a little bit. So you, you want a snapshot throughout the end of each season. With the chemical monitoring, that's, uh, that's once a month. You want to do that uh, once a month. There is a database online at Georgia.Spring where you can go and report your data. It becomes part of the uh, Department of Natural Sources. Uh, well, the Environmental Protection Division's data on the health of that particular stream. So you locate it, you choose your site, and you choose what you're going to do is your biological chemical monitoring. Once you do so, you notify them. They've got the latitude and longitude. You just GPS it, send that to them, and there you have your site set up. And uh, like I said, it's once a month for the chemical monitoring, four times a year for the biological. So that's uh, that's yeah, pretty much, I mean, there's a lot I can talk to you about. <laughs> get a lot more involved. There's training sessions that will be available. The uh, best way to find out about things is go to georgia.stream.org. Or you can just uh, go to Google or whatever search engine you use and, uh, and uh, just type in, obviously, for your doctor's training and send you there. So these are, yeah, that was just 
get a brief outline um, or an overview of what the program is about, how it's utilized, that kind of thing. I have a question, Al. Um, yes. Last year we were trained, and then, like, if we didn't do any sampling or testing, do we have to get trained again? Like, how good is our training for? I'm sorry. How, how long is our training good for? It's good for one year. One year. Your so, certification is for one year. Once you become certified as a monitor, we are Georgia monitor, that certification is good for a year. And then you can, you know, we'll hold another workshop and you recertify every year. And the reason for that is, number one, they want to be sure that you guys stay up and stay abreast on what's going on and any new changes that are coming through the program, additions, uh, deletions, new tests, new things that come along, then you'll be updated every year. Now, of course, they send you a newsletter that you can keep up with it also once you uh, become certified. But, uh, you know, it's one of the easiest ways is, is right there, here, written back. Mm -hmm. I do believe. And I believe that was that was about time out. We're gonna have to do another one. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty. So thanks, Al. Sure.